Representative Justin Amash making the case for impeaching the president, the first Republican congressman to do so, tweeting, quote, here are my principal conclusions. One, Attorney General Barr has deliberately misrepresented Mueller's report. Two, President Trump has engaged in impeachable conduct. Three, partisanship has eroded our system of checks and balances. Four, few members of Congress have read the report. The president hit back, calling Amash a, quote, total lightweight and a loser, as fellow Republicans make it clear the congressman stands alone in his views. This is exactly what he wants. He wants to have attention. He votes more with Nancy Pelosi than he ever votes with me. It's a question whether he's even in our Republican conference as a whole. My own view is that uh, Justin Amash has reached a different conclusion than I have. Let's bring in Arizona Republican Congressman Andy Biggs, member of the House Judiciary Committee. Good morning to you, Congressman. Good morning, Sandra. Well, thanks for helping us start off a new week here. And you look back at some of those comments by, made by your fellow Republicans in response to D Justin Amash. Where do you stand when you heard his, his thoughts? Well, Justin's a friend, but Justin's wrong on this, clearly. And the way he did this is all wrong as well. I mean, the reality is there was no collusion. There was no conspiracy. So that that's check one. Number two, the obstruction charge. I mean, the, to have the obstruction, you really need the predicate crime or the underlying crime. Well, there was no underlying crime, so he wasn't obstructing. And I, and I will just tell you, Sandra, when he says that few people have read this in Congress, I, I, I'm amazed at that because everybody I know who's even talking about this publicly and in private to me about this, we have all read the report. We've compared notes. We've tried to interpret what we think are strong points or weak points. We've all read the report, so I, I was kind of floored by Justin's uh, conclusions. Uh, I think I disagree with him well, you know, wholeheartedly he, he, if he, You know, he, he's making the case that uh, there was response so fast to the report within hours that there's no way some of those GOPers could have read the entire report and then formed their opinion. Did you read the report first and then decide? Yeah, absolutely, Senator. So I, I know exactly where I was. I was with, in Yuma with a group of of uh, congressmen and, uh, down there at the border. We had the hotel. We had to go by paper to get the hotel to allow us to print it out. Mm -hmm. We printed it out and, and began reading it immediately. I know Congressman Gates was with me. We started reading it immediately. We were comparing notes the whole time we were reading it as we were riding back from Yuma to Phoenix, uh, which is a, a good three-hour trip. And uh, I, I will just tell you that my, we read it. I know Buck, Radcliffe, Jordan Meadows, all of us have read this report who are out there talking about this. Uh, Collins has read it. We've had meetings about it. Uh, I, I'm, I'm just flabbergasted that he would assert that nobody has read this or few people have read this. Well, you this. heard McCarthy. I mean, he, he's making the case that uh, he's out to be a contrarian and that he's just looking for attention. What do you think his goal is here, Justin Amash? Well, it's, it's, I haven't had a chance to talk to him about it, but I have no idea what his, his motive is. But, but I, you know, his conclusions, I think, are... Are, are very different from mine, and I, I disagree with him, and, and so I don't know why he's doing this. All right, so moving to the week ahead, uh, we know that former White House counsel Don McGahn was subpoenaed to testify. That date was set for May 21st. Well, that is on the schedule for him uh, for this hearing before the House Judiciary Committee. We don't have much information past that, Congressman. Can you add anything to what we should expect tomorrow? Will he show? I, Sandra, I don't believe he's going to show. Uh, White House is exerting privilege right now. Uh, also, what I would tell you, I think this is aspirational on the part of the Democrats. They continue to want to create this narrative um, that that there was something impeachable. That they're, they're basically running this like it's impeachment. That's really what they're trying to do. And I just don't think that you're going to see cooperation uh, at this is point. Is this expected so to be an open coming. hearing? Do you know any other details about it? Uh, no, it's I, I'm like I'm kind of like you. I saw it on my calendar. It's like what? Uh, I didn't think he was coming in. So we've been trying to to make sure that if he does come in, that I am prepared with with the questions I want to ask Mr. McGann. Actually, I have some ideas of what I want to ask him, but but I I think that privilege is going to be asserted and he's not going to be there. Well, he was featured prominently, obviously, in the obstruction portion portion of the Mueller report. So he's been subpoenaed, and they're also after all the documents pertaining uh, to that. Him, what he has said on the record. So, do you know anything further about documents uh, being provided? The White House has said no in the past. Any other information there? Right. Uh, no. Right. Right now, there's no documents being provided and none offered, and they're they're just uh, uh, sitting behind the privilege right now. And and the Democrats, 
uh, you know, the, what, what happened to them is, is when Mueller came out and said there was no conspiracy, then all of a sudden the obstruction of justice had, had to change uh, its direction as well. So now they're on, basically on a fishing expedition trying to find stuff, and, and the, the White House is just saying we're not going to play that game. Got it. So, But to the best of your knowledge, to finish up here, you do not think that, that Don McGahn plans to, to show up at that hearing? That's, that's right. The way I understand it, he's not going to be there. All right. Congressman Andy Biggs, appreciate your time this morning, sir. Thanks, Sandra. Thank you.